Da-da-da. Welcome back to In the Nova Podcast. That is still a working title. We're open to suggestions. <laughs> uh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. So, Neen, how are you doing today? Doing well. Hanging in there. So, hanging in there. It, it's raining. It's a rainy day, but no. we've got a workout in. This time of year, you're going to have beautiful days or you're going to have eh, strange days. At least it's not snowing. I'll take that. Yep. Rain over snow. 55 degrees. I'll handle it. Episode three of the podcast, still not canceled. That's a win. <laughs> yeah, super uh, excited to be here. All righty, guys. Uh, so, a couple announcements coming up in the gym, or thing, or I'm sorry, this is really announcements to, as far as the podcast stuff goes. You know, next week we'll be having a sit down with Jason and Darren, who run the BJJ program. Um, they'll basically be doing a Q and A, a little backstory, and a little bit of an in depth dive into. BJJ and our program and how we run it, how it's, you know, so today's podcast is going to be a lot more Q&A on the CrossFit side, and if, if any of the questions we have are actually BJJ related, I'll try to answer, but I don't know, <laughs> you know, um, but next week we'll be recording a podcast with Jason and Darren that is very BJJ centric, and I know a lot of people have questions, even a lot of CrossFit people and open gym people and, uh, you know, clients have questions about BJJ. We're going to try to, you know, get as much information out there about that, um, so stay tuned. Um, also, and you know, if you're a CrossFit member and you have questions for Jason and Darren, make sure to send us a message so that we can get your question answered. Absolutely. Um, and then even beyond that, um, I know for a lot of masters athletes or people that are in that, f- well, we'll call it 40 plus category. We're gonna be sitting down with Coach Todd Wise, a very very experienced uh, coach. Um, he's worked with all sorts of different athletes, run different gyms. Uh, but he's going to come in and sit down on this and do a podcast, and we're going to really take a dive into talking about masters athletes, what people at 40 or 50 plus, 60 plus age range might need, and the specific things that maybe people have that are concerns from if they fall into any of those age groups. Hey, I want to do crossfit, I want to work out, I want to be healthier, stronger, whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm a little bit um, malconditioned or I'm just straight up a little bit on the older side. I think we'll be taking a cool dive into just maybe what's appropriate for you and answering questions. So if you have questions on that topic or concerns in that area, uh, let us know, please, and we'll answer all. Or we'll make it up. No, I'm just kidding. We'll make it up. As I approach 40, that'll be a fun one. Yeah, but you're like one of the, you're like Romilia, you're like the fake 40, you know, you're like, (laughs) you're like 10 years younger than you should be. Yeah, I still have three years too, so. Oh yeah, yeah, you got plenty, you got plenty of time. Um. See, I'm an old 34. Uh, I, the things I put my poor body through, <laughs> I wonder how long it's going to hold on. Um, another question, though, and this is actually a survey question we'll put out on uh, Instagram. But this is not a big deal. But I just basically want everyone to vote all across the people, people that want to do Murph. Should we do it on the Saturday before Memorial Day? Or should we do it the day of Memorial Day? I know uh, we kind of go back and forth from year to year and changing that up and we get mixed results. Um, I know I just like to have people come do the barbecue, hang out, have a great time. It's been a while since we've been able to do some group stuff. I think it'd be a lot mm-hmm. of fun to have the most people there. You yeah. know, people can do as much social distancing, et cetera, as they want. I think a lot of people will just have will all be vaccinated and stuff by then anyway. But um, Yeah, it'll be fun, uh, especially for us new members that joined since gyms reopened. Yeah, I yeah. Had a lot of that. Or especially people who've never been around to do Murph. It, the workout itself looks wild and crazy and impossible you can you could do it with a partner you could you could do a half murph you could you make the most of it um you know it's a it's in honor of you know all the veterans who have died you know serving our country um but and in the spirit of that you know it's it's about coming together as a community and being thankful to be together um to be able to be here and work out for fun um so i think that's always a big deal i think that's one of the things that makes crossfit a little unique from a community standpoint, absolutely. Um, not just making it the most crazy hardcore workout, but <laughs> to just do things together. Um, so as many people who want to do that one way or the other, you'll, you know, we'll be doing it um, at the end of May. Um, but if people want to vote or give their input, should it be the Saturday beforehand because you want to spend Monday with your family? Or should we just say, heck with it, and we'll, we'll do it on Monday of that Memorial Day and, you know, hammer away. Either way, we'll be following up with a good old grill barbecue um, you know, BYOB, BYO <laughs> food. We'll, we'll be cooking burgers and dogs. The gym usually provides some good food, but um, anything else you want to bring is always appreciated. Yes, I've been waiting for a cook-off situation. I know, after talking to Tony the other day, 
We could have a cook-off. <laughs> Battle <laughs> Royale of food? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, so the point of today's podcast, basically, we're going to try to do a little Q&A, uh, where I think we've gathered up a handful of semi-random questions um, just from members, either personal training clients or... Uh, you know, people that messaged our Instagram or commented on some of the videos from before. And then I am going to try, to the best of my ability, to answer your question clearly. Some of the questions were a little uh, sort of vague, but I think I got what you meant, and I'll just try to yeah. clarify from there. Well, Coach Matt, are you ready? Uh, I don't know. I'm actually nervous. Like, what if I'm wrong? <laughs> You're going to be fine. Put on the spot in a public space. Okay. All right, well, one of the first questions we got, it was, will there be CrossFit kids or teenager classes ah. in the near future? So perhaps, a um, p- couple things when it comes, I've had this question before, and we've actually tried to get a little bit of the CrossFit kids or a cross, like uh, a program for like younger teenagers and stuff um, off the ground before. I've gone as far as reaching out to like some of the athletic directors at the high schools and um, I got no responses. I didn't get any answers back. Also, we do need to have, um, it is one of those things where we got to justify the cost of putting the class on, you know, so it's hard to just get a program out of thin air going. Um, I know that we definitely would love to have like almost a summer camp type of program where like, hey, throughout the summer months of, you know, June 1st through August 1st or something, two hours a day we have younger kids and then, or like, you know, two hours a day we have the kids class in the afternoon, mm-hmm. one hour is for young kids, second hour is for older kids. That's the dream, um, but it's just, you know, having the resources, um, meaning staff and stuff to do it, and also just having people fill out the program. Um, I know other gyms, across the gyms in the area have tried programs like that and just doesn't take off as well. That's probably more with our marketing and, and communicating with people, with kids and clients and community. So there's some area to be worked on. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, anyone hearing this who has great ideas or great connections to helping get something like that started, more than happy to hear you out on what ideas you have or what we could do to implement a program. If it's monetizable even to the point where, you know, we break even and the best thing we get out of it is marketing, it'd be well worth, you know, taking a dive into. So. That's about all I can say to that. Sure. <laughs> I don't know much more. I've tried doing it before, like I said, and it's just hard getting the program off the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. That makes sense. All right, cool. Well, and this is something that sometimes I wonder as well as a newer member, but how do you pick the workouts? Uh, uh, okay, yeah, that's, that's a fair common question. Um, so in general, we do like what we call GPP programming, like general physical preparedness. So ideally CrossFit will help you be ready. If you do a good CrossFit program, four to five days a week, you eat well, rest as needed, um, you should be able to be ready for anything anytime, whether that's a hike with the family or um, you know just keeping up with a demanding job or playing you know sports recreationally. Um, if you wanna compete in the sport of CrossFit, there might be different dives, so to speak, um, but if you're just looking to stay healthy and fit, be stronger for maybe a different sport, soccer, football, whatever, our program is probably geared to help you be just a better rounded athlete. So when I go about programming the workouts, um, I do a couple different things. Um, a, where are we at as a community? I try to look at it as a whole. Like what do, what do a lot of the people here, maybe there's a one or two work areas we could be better at. Maybe it's pull-up strength or are we just using our upper body. Or maybe it's, you know, running. You know, this time of year we haven't been doing a lot of running, so we're going to kind of gear up and amp up to do more and more running throughout the summer. So we'll go through little phases like that, or we'll spend some weeks, several weeks, three, four weeks in a row where we're working on clean and jerk, we'll say. And then, you know, you might see clean and jerks kind of come out of the programming as often, but then you start to see overhead squats or some other thing. So I just try to balance it um, so that you're just using as much of your body as possible throughout every week, but getting a good balance of upper body, lower body, back, core, um, short workouts, long workouts. Um, So to go down a little more specific, every week we'll have one workout, at least one workout that is quite long, probably close to 30 minutes, maybe even a little over. Mm -hmm. We'll have one workout at least that's pretty short, or a lot of times we'll do like intervals, you know, three minutes on, two minutes rest or Mm -hmm. something like that a lot of sprint fast pace movement and then uh, we'll usually have one day a week um, where we're just doing something real heavy weight lifting and that'll change from week to week um, 
And then the rest of the workouts, the other, if that was three, so the other three workouts of the week will fall somewhere in between those ranges, you know, 15 minutes long. Obviously, our classes are an hour no matter what, but the, the intense, hard-working part of the class might be 10 minutes, it might be 12, it might be a combination of lifting mm-hmm. and endurance stuff. Um, so as far as where I get the pro- workouts, you know, sometimes I take them from other programs, like Comp Train is a popular one. Um, CrossFit Mayhem re- affiliate releases a lot of workouts. I think, oh, this is this is a good workout, and I, I could see where our members would benefit from it. Or yeah. I'll just be thinking, all right, I want to. We haven't done a lot of long distance rowing. How could I kind of amp us up to learn different types of rowing, different intervals, different distances, and you know, plug it in throughout a series of weeks. Um, and so this, it's not an exact program, but I balance it out pretty well. Where I think if you follow it. And, you know, you don't cherry pick and skip the workouts that you're not good at. Everyone will improve. And we've seen that particularly, I think, with women lately in the gym. A lot of girls hitting some their first pull-ups or really getting to a bigger and bigger sets of push-ups, little things like that. That mm-hmm. um, That is like, you know, you're getting to be able to use your own body at will. And that's what I would ultimately hope, no matter what our programming, you know, variations are throughout the year, is that you're able to use your body uh, – at will to do whatever you want um, yeah. and not be limited. Now, obviously, some people, you know, age and injuries and different things might truly limit, like, yeah. how far you can take one thing. But in general, you'll be able to move better and better, yeah. uh, faster and faster, stronger and stronger, I guess, as time goes on. Go ahead. Do you have um, a suggestion for rest days? Like, obviously, everybody's different. Everyone works out at a different level. When they do come, pushes themselves harder, Yeah. not as hard. I know that isn't it's like three days on, one day off is the typical like CrossFit. Yeah, I remember back that, in the day that's a common that. one, mm-hmm. um, and that's fine if people work that. I do have way more of a um, perspective on how what I believe is the right thing to do or the best potential thing to do. At one time, I used to be one of those people who would say, "If you can handle another day, go another day." Well, you know, don't be such a you know, tough it out, mm-hmm. and that kind of can work. Not really. Sure. It makes it makes your training unpredictable and inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Where I do think that if a person, let's say you're a new person, we can go down a rabbit hole with this topic. Actually, and I don't mind answering it because <laughs> we were actually talking a lot about this in staff meetings recently. I've talked to different members about it. Yeah. And I've only learned this, you know, from going to different seminars and meeting with coaches that have been doing it a lot longer than me, a lot better than me. People that are former games athletes and stuff, and just mm-hmm. hearing their perspective, and it, it's pretty consistent amongst all of them. Um. So, if prescription that we recommend here at Nova would be something like if you're a brand new person and you've just started doing CrossFit, probably three days a week is a good place to start. Mm-hmm. I know some people come in, they're ambitious, I want to get healthy, I want to do as much as I can. Usually, you know, health and fitness, <laughs> in the long run, um, you have to have the diet right, you know, you want to be able to eat well, you need to be able to sleep well. However, if somebody isn't quite getting the diet right, you know, they're not eating fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, meat, you know, all that stuff, yeah. drinking enough water, resting enough at night. Three days a week, you could still make some progress. You could still get a little fitter, get a little healthier, but not burn yourself out. Um, you know, so you can get a little, you just get used to the workouts. It's not mm-hmm. overwhelming. It's not, you're not walking around so freaking sore you can barely move because, you know, that's not the goal. Right. Then as you get a little better at the diet part, you get a little better at the sleeping well, hydrating well, um, managing your stress. Uh, you can start to increase four or five days a week, you know, and then um, at four or five days a week, you can, if you're assuming you have, again, the nutrition and sleep and everything under control, you can really start to make noticeable improvements, not only physically that other people probably obviously see, mm-hmm. um, but like in your performance, the weight lifted, the, um, you know, how fast you can run, how long it takes you to get tired, you really start to see an increase in those areas. Um, and then if you happen to do all the nutrition and sleep things right and train five days a week, like hard, when you come in, you give it your best damn effort every day, no matter what the workout is, some things you're good at, some things you're bad, but you're going hard. You just consistently see improvements. And then, like I was mentioning in the program earlier, we practice mm-hmm. things kind of in waves or a little bit. You can actually start to make, you can almost predict when your next PR is. Like, hey, it's, it's been a few weeks or maybe a few months since we've done this particular workout, we'll call it. Maybe it's that workout Cindy with the five pull-ups. You know, if you've been eating well, um, sleeping well, training four to five days a week consistently, 
you can almost guarantee that you're about to get more than you've ever gotten at that next round of Cindy, mm -hmm. um, the next workout of Cindy. Now, people who don't sleep well, um, they don't eat well, you're more likely to get hurt trying to do four or five days a week, in my opinion, and what I've seen, in even things myself. So six or seven days a week, cool, you're hardcore, oh my gosh. You're also never really able to rest and recover, so you're not making the improvements. That rest two days a week is so important. And the more skilled you are, the harder you're able to go, the more important those rest is. Sometimes it's the fittest, most furious athletes who want to rest the least. And then they stop making gains, they start making plateaus, or worse, they even get injured. And then it becomes, well, I liked CrossFit until I got injured, or um, you know, they're always got to, oh, my calf is strained, my neck is strained, my bicep is, you know, yeah. or a worse injury. And those are a lot of overuse injuries. And that's why I say, like, before you can even do four or five days a week hard, you have to have the sleep and rest and nutrition part. I point. feel like we could do an entire episode just on Yeah, I'm sorry to be ranting, <laughs> I'm ranting down the line. No, but, I mean, it's good advice. You know, that's a, it was a great question, and I'm... I would bet my career, which I am, because that's what I preached to, to this gym to do, that if you follow that prescription, um, in order, relatively speaking, you will make significant physical improvement, um, if not exceptional. And because even if you follow some of the pro CrossFitters, Rich Froning, or even Matt Frazier, or bodybuilders, so the same way, a lot of them are taking two or more days of rest. They are training to maximum capacity on their training days, and they are resting as needed. Strong men, the competitive strong men, uh, Dorian Yates, the former bodybuilder, has a podcast where he talks about this. I think it was on the Joe Rogan show. He was working out, hard weightlifting three days a week, and did cardio two days a week. And then he rested. He won, I think, six Mr. Olympias. Damn. But the point is that rest is what makes a difference. you got to train hard. Everyone knows that. Blah, blah, blah. But the recovery. Mm -hmm. I hope that rant was not boring. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's our prescription for CrossFit. <laughs> no, it's good. Um... um. And I, you know, I allegedly have been wrong in the past, but I'm pretty <laughs> confident that I'm not wrong on this. No, you're good. Um, all right. Well, you know, some of the members want to know, like, what is the most important thing to do when they're working out? In summary, keep moving. Um, so we say, like, in CrossFit, obviously, let's assume everyone has nutrition. Your nutrition is going to be the most important thing you do for your health. Mm -hmm. um, right, uh, we'll lump sleep into nutrition as a part of the category. From there, it's the metabolic conditioning, metcon, we call it. But um, what I mean by that is like your ability to keep moving. Now, the weight you move or how fast you're moving, like uh, you know, can vary. Mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. If we're doing a workout and the RX weight is 225, but you're doing a deadlift at 100 pounds, I, that's fine. Just mm -hmm. keep doing. You know, so it yeah. could be. I'll give you an example. Workout could be run. 200 meters, do 10 deadlifts, and do 20 push-ups, and then do as many rounds as possible in 12 minutes. What I want, like the best thing that's going to be the, what's going to have the best effect on your health, meaning your blood pressure, your cholesterol levels, your um, aerobic capacity of your heart and lungs, you know, uh, is going to be the fact that you keep moving, that you don't come in from round number two, and you got such a heavy weight on your bar that you have to do two reps and take a breather. And then do three reps and take another breather. And then you're using up your time standing and looking at the bar. Um, I'd rather you be able to pick a weight that you're going to be able to do pretty close to 10 unbroken reps. Or maybe you take one quick break and you do the other, you know, five and five or something. Then you're on to your push-ups and then you're back on to your next run. And for that 12 minutes, you're just constantly moving through. That is going to have a better impact on your health and then your overall fitness performance down the road than how heavy you're going and all that. And it's fun to lift heavy. It's cool looking to do muscle-ups. But, the, but if those things, heavy or super advanced movement, are slowing you down so much in your conditioning workouts that you're actually spending a lot of times looking at the bar or just catching your breath, you're not really getting probably the stimulus that's going to have the most impact on your health mm -hmm. and just overall performance. I, that's my opinion, but I'm pretty sure from what I've learned other, other coaches would say the same. I'm sure yeah. there's different exceptions for different sports and um, you know, maybe different exceptions for, but in general, like, so whether you're 55 and overweight trying to lose weight or you're 24 and trying to be, you know, or, well, I don't know how old, I was going to say in your soccer team in college, but 24 is probably 
if you're, if you're 21 and you're trying to be your team captain next year by you know yeah. you know that those two people are going to both receive the benefits from continuing to move in their workouts more than how heavy they go per se. And again, that's a little bit of a broad stroke. I mean, there's specific athletes, specific needs, but in general, um, keep moving. Yeah, no, that's great. I'll remember that next time I feel like I'm dying. Yeah, and that's when we're talking scaling, <laughs> when we're trying to coach people on how to pick the right weight. It's usually to get that kind of result. If you're strong and, and fit and you have the endurance and you don't need to scale the weight, don't. You know, but, you know, sometimes people come in two rounds into a five-round workout and hit a wall and are just moving slow and, and blah through. They're probably not doing what's best for them overall in the long run. Anyway. Awesome. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this person asked, when I'm working out on my own, there are certain movements I just can't do. And then they asked, like, how do I get to a point where I can do everything, even if it's not excellent? Individual athletes with different needs, it's hard to answer specifically. But we, again, we're actually having a discussion about this in our staff meeting a couple, maybe a month or two ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think it was, yeah, anyway. But, um. No matter who you are, um, there's three main pieces to every movement, like the mobility of it. It's kind of the foundation, right? Are you able to set yourself up in the proper starting position? And are you able to move the object or your own body weight through space and then finish, have the mobility to finish in the proper positions? Um, this, This is the point where having a coach see you move and give you, hey, this is good, this is not good. But so it's the mobility. Do I have the mobility to do this movement? Mm-hmm. Um, and then usually the next part is the skill. Um, do I have the skill? Like meaning, do I have the timing? Am I jumping at the right point? Am I pulling the bar or other thing at the right point? Am I throwing it, you know, am I standing up all the way before I throw the ball? Or um, the skills. And a lot of times those are coordination driven things that just take repetition of practice, repetition of practice, repetition of practice. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes people who are very strong people very strong people will still struggle to lift medium heavy weight for other people because their the skills are very raw like they're choppy they're inconsistent rep to rep so they struggle to move the bar especially in the Olympic lift but um and the final thing is is strength like and strength particularly sometimes in gymnastics like people always think strength is like lifting the weights sometimes strength is like like to do a pistol squat like a single leg squat on your own body it takes a considerable amount of regular strength in your legs and if balance, you might like have balance. great mobility yeah balance you know balance is kind of, kind of like the skill part of it you know like mm-hmm. sometimes a person has a uh, great mobility and, and uh, great strength but they actually struggle with the skill in the middle so they're losing their balance and they're falling over or they're it could be something else like you know the muscle up you know some people you have to have some pretty rough mobility to not be able to have the mobility for a muscle up but they might not have the skill and the timing of when to pull and turn over they might have all the strength to do that um, yeah. So usually it's those three things, how break it, we break it down anyways. Does this person have the mobility to do it? Mm-hmm. Is it there, there are there skills on point? Do they have the timing down and the balance coordination? And then are they just straight up strong enough? Usually if you can do those three things, it's surprising if you couldn't do a movement. Now I'm not saying you might not have the capacity to do 10 in a row. Yeah. Or at an extremely heavy weight, but, you know, to do the movement. So what kind of practice do you suggest someone do? Like, is it just straight practice? Like, I was really gunning for my, my double unders, so I just literally did double unders till I cried. <laughs> yes. Well, um... Or, like, handstand push-ups. Like, just drill them. Yeah, it, it, it'd be hard to say just do more of stuff. I mean, sometimes that is the answer. You just need more practice. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes people start getting double unders. I'm like... And then they'll get 10 in a row, but then they all of a sudden can't get five in a row again for, like, the rest of the workout. And that's okay, but the point is just practice. Just keep taking them in small chunks. Yeah. But then there are other times where, like, you need a coach to kind of see you. I can't I can't really answer that without seeing what's happening when you sure. move. Because maybe it is a mobility problem. Like, you're just not able – you know, you're leaning here because this is too tight for you to lean here and to keep your posture or something like that. Um, more often than not – it's always some type of mobility or balance issue with a lot of movements because like again uh, like skills of it like the wall ball throwing it up hitting the wall having it come right down to you squatting back down throwing it again smoothly 
A lot of times, it's just new practice. New people will struggle with that badly. I've seen decently athletic people like who play sports come in. I have new wall balls, and it's it's humbling for the guys. In particular, I don't know why guys have a hard time when wall balls don't work well for men. They don't handle it with uh, the best of spirit. I don't have very good hand-eye coordination, so I always get a rogue toss in there somewhere. But yeah, yeah, there'll be some, <laughs> but the, the, but in general, you know, through practice, that yeah. skill develops, and then film it becomes like. Root of, like just a basic thing you don't even think about. Now you just think about how many reps, how heavy is my ball. But at first, it's just that building the skill of it. Most people can squat down and, in theory, throw the ball up into the air and then catch it. Doing it rhythmically, yeah, thirty times in a row. <laughs> that might take some practice. Well, we probably have some wall balls coming, don't we? Next Friday. Next Friday. <laughs> like, Friday. We haven't seen those in a while. Friday. We, yeah, that, and so that's a great example, right? We, we uh, <laughs> like go back to what we were talking about before. Haven't had a lot of wall balls for weeks, yeah. um, but we've done thruster movements. We've mimicked that mm-hmm. that pattern at times, um, so it's not like it's all lost. You know, the body works as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're about to get back into some <laughs> wall balls, and uh, I think we even get Goody. to play with some heavy wall balls coming up too. Oh great! I won't ruin the surprise for you, Nina. Oh, I know man. how you. I know how you like the anxiety of not knowing. <laughs> Listen, don't threaten me with a good time. Nice, spicy workout. <laughs> a special person thinks wall balls are a good time. <laughs> um, great. So let's talk about like some supplements. We've gotten a question about creatine. What do you think about using creatine and doing CrossFit? Um, yeah. Uh, oh, well, I take creatine every single day. I have for as long as I can remember at this point. Um, so, uh, yeah, I not only think people who do CrossFit regularly, consistently, or any type of physical training should take creatine. Um, people who probably just work hard jobs, particularly hard jobs that are, like, maybe in the heat, um, should take creatine. Uh, a, let's, creatine is, like, the most researched supplement in history. There are journal articles from every country, in the every civilized country in the world. There's science on this, there's science on that. There are known... No declared side effects. And what creatine, the best thing creatine does for you is it hydrates your muscles. It helps with muscle hydration. And so some people will say like, uh, oh, you know, why well, start, it says it, you know, could make you retain water. Yes, but like in the right way. Mm-hmm. It'll help. So, you know, let's say we work out hard. We do some shoulder exercises. Our shoulders are tired. Our shoulder muscles are going to have little microfiber tears, which is normal. And then in order to heal, they absorb water from the rest of your body into the muscle. Um, and, and that helps all the fibers that got torn heal back together stronger and thicker and everything. Uh, take creatine, for example. Um, creatine is stored in the muscle. So a lot of times when we're talking about is your body absorbing water or retaining water, it's retaining water in the muscle. Not like on your belly or some other place that looks bad. If you think that, it's just a misunderstanding of how creatine works. Also, there's like a whole bunch of stuff, and I, I'm not a doctor, I don't know the specifics, but there are podcasts out there, I can look them up and share them with everyone if you really want to know and talks about how like creatine has like all this neurological protection effects so even people that are aging that are semi-physically active could benefit from taking creatine you know i guess the right thing to do here is say hey consult a medical professional etc (laughs) etc but um in general you know i i would recommend any i tell all my clients too i have for years i can't even I didn't know the last time I was not taking creatine. Because even in the summertime when I was painting houses last year, mm-hmm. a lot of physical labor, I wasn't doing a ton of CrossFit. I wasn't able to work out as much. I was exhausted. I was taking creatine every single day. Yeah. And I definitely thought... So, like, you know, more than anything, if it's going to enhance your performance, quote-unquote, it would enhance it in the aspect of how fast you can recover. So if you're a person who's, like, suffering with soreness a lot, or you're, like, you know, you got one good workout, and then you have to take two days off, and then you work out hard again, and you got to take two days off, you might feel a lot better just taking creatine once a day. Yeah, I can testify to that. Personally, I I feel like I'm just like weary of supplements, period, unless they're like supernatural, so. Supernatural? <laughs> supernatural, like they turn you into. Oh, so you're like a big Deanna Ball fan? Like, <laughs> no. Um, really into those I testosterone meant, like, injections? Skinny clean, natural ingredients <laughs> is what I meant. Ah, oh. But um, I just recently, the last... I don't know, maybe four months, started taking a pre-workout with some caffeine and creatine and some BCAAs, um, which are branched chain amino acids for all the people out there that don't know. What does that mean? We'll go down another day. (laughs) Yeah, another day. 
But I suffer really bad from delayed onset muscle soreness, and it, I've seen a significant improvement in that specifically. And I, yeah, yeah, I was thinking it was the creatine in the pre-workout. So, yes, happy. happy. Yeah, I know there's a video uh, recently where Matt Fraser was talking about like different things he did nutritionally and stuff, and uh, he said he got to the point where he didn't get sore, and uh, he was doing a lot of weird supplementation things. Um, but I mean, like, weird only compared to the average Joe. I'm not going to take like concentrated amounts of Gatorade, okay? But uh, he was an elite level competitor, training yeah. obnoxiously amount every day, and despite all that training, he wasn't really getting sore because his recovery was so good. Yeah, of course he was taking creatine and other things, but um, yeah. That, and like I said, that there is hasn't been any published articles that I'm aware of from a credible source that proves a negative side effect from creatine. Yeah. Um, the worst case scenario, from what I understand, is you take too much, or you take a whole bunch of extra that you don't need, like over five grams a day. Your body just pees it out. Like it's yeah. like uh, you just waste some money. But well, that's I mean it's kind of like with uh, like other vitamins, vitamins sometimes. Yeah. You know, and it, I think when anytime we're talking about supplements in general, like uh, you should be supplementing. You know, your priority is around mm-hmm. food. You can supplement some nutritional pieces here and there um, to help make up for what you're not getting from food. Yeah. But, you know, it's always widely debated, like, oh, does a multivitamin even work? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Worst case scenario, you have expensive pee. You know, <laughs> best case scenario, it works collagen. a lot. You know, what, collagen? Yeah, that's another one. Right? <laughs> See, that's one that I can't talk too much about because, like, I don't have, like, a scientific, like, analysis in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when ain't I, that's funny that you even brought that up. It's like one of the only was, other supplements that I take. Who was just telling me? Oh, my client, uh, Henry, Henry Perron, uh, comes in. He's a CrossFit member, sparingly, but he was just telling me that he swears, and he's in his late 50s, although he looks may, way younger, that collagen uh, supplements, glucosamine supplements stuff, he swears by it. Because we were joking about me getting yeah. old and my birthday was last week. And he goes, wait till you start with glucosamine. Glucosamine is really good. And I was like... Well, yeah, so... But I think another thing my pre-workout has it has in it is the L-glucosamine, but it also has collagen, but then I, I take more collagen and I just put it in my coffee. I mean, if, if a person I takes think, it and they feel like it helps, cool, I can't, I, I don't take it, I don't really know for sure, but I'm sure it exists to some degree, you know, how much, you know, like if you have inflamed arthritis, I don't think glucosamine is going to fix your problem, but no. if you're just trying to maybe preserve good health can't hurt right yeah okay just that's as far as i know but i i don't yeah i only have my own personal testimony from collagen peptides <laughs> most of my uh yeah most of my testimonies are all personal experience or what i've seen with clients or sure. and or like literally read an article i try to you know you know the american journal of sports medicine things like that or mm-hmm. american even just like some of the other medical journals that research these things you know it's usually where i try to find the topics you know usually the crossfit journal um on the website will have a lot of scientific articles pulled from credible sources and then you know helps you cut out all the wasteful stuff yeah yeah there's a there's scientific journals and then there's journalism research and journalism sure. research is usually a pitch with an agenda you know so yeah I'm trying to separate those all right well that's all we had Ooh, that's that's questions it. Here's a question. Matt, what is the meaning of life? Let me tell you. <laughs> no. Don't get him started, no, people. <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? I'm, I know nothing. I have a few theories on stuff. I don't really know anything. I'm like the Jon Snow of Nova Fitness. Oh I know nothing. But I have some ideas. What are some of your favorite podcasts? <laughs> um, well, I like, I like Rogan. Who has two hours to listen to that man? I don't. I don't listen to all of the episodes, and it depends on who he has. But I, I think know. depending on who the the person that's on the podcast is, I'm like, ah, this guy's good. And even some people I like, they'll be less interesting than I thought. Mm-hmm. And you know, I just won't listen to the rest. But you know, I, I think in general, it's pretty good. It's just basic entertainment. He has like people on that are worth sometimes hearing from. Um, other podcasts that I like, Lewis Howes. School of Greatness podcast. Yeah, I also too. like uh, Flagrant 2, which is questionably appropriate for all ages. 
<laughs> but it is so funny. Uh, it's a couple comedians that do it. Um, so that one you... And then I actually listen to the Pat McAfee sports show. Like, that's part sports, part just entertainment in general. Like, they're just goofy dudes. You know, I spend a lot of time reading books, listen to audiobooks. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need that, like, let loose of some silly nonsense that is politically incorrect, but still hilarious nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... Cool. Yeah. I really enjoy the Well-Fed Women podcast. Well-Fed Women? Yes. I it's, like me some Well-Fed um, Women. Noelle Tarr and Stephanie Ruper, and they used to be the Paleo Women podcast, but since they don't really eat a paleo diet anymore, they kind of, like, dissolved that, and now <clears throat> they really just answer questions about women's, like, hormonal health and how nutrition plays a role in that, and they bring on pertinent guests and stuff. I've been listening for a long time. It's you, good stuff. You know, one thing that, it, talking about, like, their, how they were paleo and then they're not as paleo anymore, you know, people, that's a question that people always ask me all the time, like, what do you think of this diet, or what about yeah, this kind of diet? dietary theories. They're all different diet strategies, is what I started calling them. It's like mm-hmm. a, a plan. But <laughs> all the ones that work or are notable or worth doing have the same basic things in, print, in place that we always say in CrossFit. In CrossFit, it's like, what, uh, eat meat, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, yeah, little starch, and no sugar. And all of them, paleo or keto or vegetarians or the carnivore, you know what none of them are doing? Eating refined shit from the store that has ingredients I can't explain. And overprocessed it, it, Yeah, or stop eating, you know, animal meat that has tumors carved out of it. There's, I could go on a rant. When I was in nutrition school, we learned all about the meat industry. For a while, I didn't eat anything but, like, organic meat, cause, but then I probably I'm a brat and forgot. I will only buy organic meat or... I get venison for my sister. Yeah, we, we, we usually buy a cow. So we bought a half cow recently. and mm-hmm. Have enough beef to last forever. But it was, you know, trying to be a healthier sourcing. But uh, I don't want to go on that rant. But the point <laughs> is, is all those things, whether they're just different strategies to help you. And if, if you need a strategy like paleo or, mm-hmm. or whatever to help you get, like, to make improvements on your body, especially if, you, you know, you're significantly overweight or you're sick, um, certain aspects, like certain diets have, like, you know, proven improvements on like you know uh, inflammatory symptoms or you know uh, allergies and things like that some people are gluten sensitive even if they're not like allergic mm-hmm. um some people are sensitive to dairy even if they're not allergic so when they cut it out they just feel better they sleep better it's all yeah. those things um but I, I always tell clients i'm like if you like eating this way because um, for me I, I probably fall like on the high fat lower carb that's kind of how i like to eat mm-hmm. um i don't know some people don't and that's okay but I just generally eat meat, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, yep. no little starch, no sugar. And that's like CrossFit's cliche. But it tends to be true in all aspects. Find someone who looks phenomenal, who's, you know, feeling their best, living their best life, and they're eating random fried trash every night. No way. Like, no, no one's performing at an impressive level or even looking that great. Yeah. Or it could be maybe someone who tries super, super hard and it gets half the results because you don't eat well. Yeah. I, I, the longer I spend, in the, you know, it's been 10 years now, the longer I spend in the fitness industry as a coach and trainer, the more I'm, even more I'm convinced, I'm like, it doesn't really matter to your nutrition, right? You could do CrossFit, you could do bodybuilding, you could do powerlifting, you could do running classes mm-hmm. in the park, you could do boot camp, burn theory, whatever the different things are. But until you get your nutrition right, it doesn't matter. And we talk yeah, about that, that across the to we've tried to, in life, not even just your sports performance. I mean, it just helps with so many things. Stress management, it yeah. improves your sleep quality, your mental clarity throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, it, we could go, we, this is a topic we could go down in more explanation, maybe even get somebody who's more of an expert in the area on, um, but, uh, you know, the ups and downs of your eating throughout the day, especially blood sugars. Mm-hmm. You know, you see when your blood sugars spike to the roof, you get low energy and high anxiety. When your blood sugar crashes to the floor, you get uh, depression and uh, anxiety. <laughs> and, and like, you know, and so it's when you're eating whole regular foods, you have a more balanced blood sugar. And, so, and we can go down that topic. But like a lot of those other psychological symptoms that how you're, how you're handling stressful situations. Some people have the same stress as you and I. And uh, they su- it su- they suffer from it. It like impacts their life negatively. And then some people have worse things than you and I, and they just hum along because yeah. in other areas of their you know their nutrition and their wellness are put in place. And it doesn't make you know I don't think you can 
necessarily cure some of those mental illness related things with nutrition, but you can certainly improve your symptoms or at least try to be more in control of your symptoms. And I think that gives people a lot of power, you know, to feel like you're in control of whatever ailment you have, even if you can't cure it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, what are you going to do? Just sit back and pray. <laughs> You can't, you know, you can only pray so much till something works, you know. Yeah, you got, sure. you got to take some action, too. There's also a lot of weird things that are linked to, like, your digestive health that of course. you wouldn't even think of, with especially with stress and anxiety, especially, too, if you're not regular or if you're not fueling your gut microbiome well enough to be able to digest what you're doing. No, that's very true. And, like, I think a lot of things, like, talking about microbiome or your digestive gut health, even for people who are trying to be healthy, I don't think it's understood very well. I, you know, I, when I was in my undergrad, I took nutrition classes as a health science major, and uh, we didn't talk about gut and microbiome. I think our teacher might have, you know, I had a couple different professors, obviously, but anatomy and physiology classes. Mm-hmm. Gut bacteria might have been discussed, but not like in how it affects your health, how it affects your mental health, all these things. Now, you know, but 10 years ago, 12 years ago, how old am I? Uh, it might have been 15 years ago now <laughs> um, since, I, you know, but um, the, the research on, you know, in places like the Mayo Clinic or other, you know, the CDC and other places that do those kind of, you know, the scientific studies just didn't exist. People didn't yeah. understand it. So now it's like, even as it comes out more and more to healthier people, I still don't think it's a like grasp entirely. No, for sure. But definitely, maybe we should definitely work to get a get an expert in here. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's not keep <laughs> rambling. Uh, okay. I hope that for those who listen to this, that some questions you were know, answered, and if some of what our explanations were led to more questions, um, I hope I was clear enough on the you know the workout, you know how we do our kind of our programming. We mm-hmm. don't necessarily. I know a lot of gyms just pay for it from other places and that's fine i kind of like i think it's fun to program and play and see what happens with our membership like if we do this type of workout if we change up you know where do we see things changing and happening and, um you know i do try to consider a what people need as much as hey you know what people like but anyway but if hopefully if you have more questions on that or even suggestions be sensitive with my ego but yeah, and if you had more questions that came up from what we discussed, just drop them in the comment section, and we will answer them there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try. Yeah, we'll do there, and I think we'll try to do like a Q and A, maybe like once a month. Yeah. You know, and then we'll, we'll have other guests stuff, probably answering questions along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned, and for all you BJJ folks or people with like interest in BJJ, uh, stay tuned. Next week we'll have our next uh, pod with. Darren and Jason, and then uh, some of your master's athletes or people who know people who fall into that master's category. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll be talking with Todd Wise soon. Awesome. All right. <laughs>